My name is Chuck Long. I'm a manager here with Consolidated Grain and Barge. We're glad to have everybody tuning in today to learn more about our facility. I'm going to take a few minutes this morning to run through a slide presentation to talk about our company, CGB, and specifically a little bit more about my terminal here in Jeffersonville, Indiana. With me today is going to be our commercial manager, Tim Baumgart. Tim is going to go into a little bit more of the specifics uh, and the numbers, and I'm going to talk more about the operation in general. So first, just a little bit about the history of Consolidated Grain and Barge. It started with a couple gentlemen uh, with an innovative idea back in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, they started a facility, uh, a barge trading concept that evolved into needing to acquire some assets. So they started building elevators, acquiring elevators, and started trading grain. From there, uh, our humble roots started mainly as a grain, grain origination company. From there, we started to diverse, diversify over the past few decades into different transportation and logistics kind of offshoots, uh, always kind of all driven from the original goal of trading grain is kind of the core principle of our company. Uh, today, since that beginning, we were acquired by two different companies. One company is Zeno Grain, one company is Itochu, so we're a private company. We've got a little over 100 facilities and approximately 3,000 employees as of today. And as I mentioned, we started out with originating grain, and today we've diversified into other services for the producer. As I mentioned, our two parent companies, one is pronounced as Zeno. It's a large cooperative in Japan. Itochu would be the other parent company. Zeno is a private company. Itochu is uh, an open trading company. So the first uh, picture I have here is of our export facility in Convent, Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans on the Mississippi River. Um, you can kind of see a large infrastructure there with about 4 million bushels of storage. We've got two docks um, with a recent acquisition of the second dock um, in the last year and a half where we can export and import ships, load and unload uh, different array of products, both grain and other products. So this slide talks a little bit more about some of the different divisions that we have within our company. Of course, the main component, the origination of grain, procurement of grain from both first producers of grain as farmers, but also from other elevators and traders. From there, we also have some offshoots. If we're handling your grain, uh, we started getting involved with the marine side, which is uh, barge logistics, vessel logistics, things like that. Uh, we roll into the feed ingredients side. We also have some soybean processing in our facility in Mount Vernon, Indiana. Terminal and logistics with all the barges and, and vessels coming and going. They had needs, they had services. We saw a niche to fill that, so we got involved and started a division to work with them. Stevedore and logistics kind of goes hand in hand with that. That's the uh, movement of the product itself. Um, since we were dealing with farmers, we saw a need to help them in financial investments, whether it's uh, operating equity lines or real estate loans, capital acquisitions, things like that. And then, of course, uh, our bread and butter originating grain, we saw a need for getting a little bit more uh, technical trading skills other than just selling cash price. So we have a risk management service that also encompasses crop insurance with our grain marketing plans. So these slides uh, briefly highlight each of those divisions I just mentioned. Uh, the grain division, of course, we're here to per procure grain for our parent companies as the primary objective. So, of course, we have export grain that's going out uh, to overseas, to both Japan, but also everywhere in, in the world. We also have domestic end users, depending on which facility and which part of the region you're in, that we supply as well. 106 facilities, 38 of them are river terminals, and 6 of them are shuttles or large train loaders. We talk about uh, trying to have some innovative, customized marketing solutions as well as being able to take care of our bread and butter, uh, sell it across the scales. We try to offer a variety array of services for the farmers. This is a uh, picture that kind of shows all of those 100 plus facilities kind of where we're located. You see a common theme. We uh, intentionally have tried to be on the Illinois rivers, the upper Mississippi River, as well as the Ohio River. All of that's like a capital Y that's tributary to our export facility in the Gulf. We also have some Southwest that's going to be a little bit of a newer venture in the last decade going west. The primary principle was to supply grain for export to our parent companies. This is just an example. This is in Naples, Illinois. Uh, northern, central northern Illinois kind of gives a nice picture uh, of a facility there with some grain silos. Each one of the silos holds roughly a barge. You can kind of see a picture of the fleet, kind of see a, just a general terminal elevator, what it looks like. This is a nice shot we got here uh, one night last year in the fall. This is our facility here at Jeffersonville, which we'll take a tour of and look around later a little bit more. 
uh, but you also can see the individual silos. The concrete silos hold roughly a barge, 65,000 ish, uh, 1,500 tons of product in each of those. The larger steel structures are going to hold anywhere from half a million to 650,000 bushels, depending on which one they are. This terminal, you might notice a couple different looking things that maybe you're not familiar with around a grain elevator. As I mentioned, one of our uh, divisions that we, we deal with is also on the CTLC bulk handling side. So uh, a lot of our producers uh, like to bring uh, grain, corn, soybeans, wheat, haul it in here, and then they'll backhaul product going into the interior, and they might haul things such as road salt or different varieties of fertilizer that we handle and offload from vessel to barge to here to truck into the interior. So we have products going both ways. So I mentioned we have a soybean processing division. We have a processor in Mount Vernon, Indiana, kind of the toe of the state. And they're up to roughly 144,000 bushels a day of soybeans that they crush. And of course, they're making soybean meal and soybean oil for the both domestic and export markets. That's going to be utilized a lot in different variety of products, as you can see here, feeds and other, other things. The feed ingredients. Uh, those are byproducts, whether it's going to be DDGs or other things like that that are used as ingredients in livestock feed. We also uh, provide a steady supply of that in domestic markets as well as export markets. And as the slide shows, we're moving those through logistics of truck, rail, and barge. The container division is kind of an offshoot, kind of a, a unique market, but where there's been some demand for a lot of these containers, we're moving across country with other products, uh, agricultural products and also non-agricultural products. Um, but that's kind of a niche we found with the logistics of those containers might come in on the west coast and haul some kind of product into say Chicago prior. They were taking those containers back to the boats empty and traversing to wherever they came from. We saw a need and an opportunity there to maybe have some backhauls of grain in those products. Plus with the premium grains and some of the different systems around the world having traceability, this provided a nice forum for that. So we've been become involved in the logistics and drainage of containers moving grains. We call this CTLC. The um, best way I can describe that is, uh, so it's kind of the opposite of grain. A lot of our grain here in the Midwest comes in via truck, gets offloaded, put onto a barge, sent down river, put onto a boat, and exported. A lot of the CTLC products complement our current services because they'll kind of reverse the flow. So as those vessels, barges, and trucks are going each way empty and, and loaded, we try to take advantage of that and bring products back the other way up river. So we'll bring in a vessel of uh, fertilizer, we'll offload it with a division of ours in uh, midstream unloading with cranes and derricks off of the boat. We'll arrange the transportation, we'll arrange goods and services, we'll communicate with different people, uh, we'll load those barges, we'll bring them upriver, we'll bring them to a place like here at Jeffersonville where we have the opportunity to transload it to a different form of transportation, maybe from a barge to a truck or barge to a rail, and we also will arrange storage uh, in this case, particularly here at Jeffersonville, we have domes and warehouses where we can store that product and then truck it out one or two trucks at a time whenever the customer needs it. So that's CTLC. They also do a lot of uh, work with um, brake bulk things that are non-traditionally agriculture, coils of steel, uh, fertilizer, salt, things like that. Diversified services. So years ago, as crop insurance was kind of becoming a thing and people started wanting to talk about more about revenue cost or revenue dollars per acre instead of cost per bushel instead of just simply hauling the grain in in the fall and selling it across the scales <clears throat> we saw an opportunity there to help enhance the farmers bottom line through some more technical trading some more um, risk management for lack of a better term and crop insurance was a real nice complimentary tool that helped us be able to guarantee some revenue and work with the producers to come up with a little more detailed specific business plan instead of just selling the grain off the combine in the fall. That's kind of the umbrella of services that Diversified Services offers. So in general, that's a quick, quick overview of some of the different services that we offer with CGB. A lot of these services are all offered here at Jeffersonville at this site. We've got roughly about 100 employees that work at this site. We have the, of course, grain division. We have the CTLC fertilizer handling division. We have the diversified services and ag finance readily available through our uh, originators and growers uh, here with Tim and his crew. We've got uh, approximately 100 employees that work at this site. Our region encompasses everywhere from roughly Cincinnati down to oh, just outside of Evansville into southeastern Illinois. We've got roughly 16 elevators in this region. This is the regional hub here. 
So a lot of the activities are coordinated through this site. Typically, uh, our draw territory for Jeffersonville is about a 60 mile draw. We uh, unload corn, soybeans, wheat, a little bit of rye. We bring in some rye via rail, offload it, transload it, clean it. Uh, goes into the distillery markets in this area. It's kind of more of a regional thing here. Uh, we handle uh, a wide variety of bulk products from salt to all kinds of different fertilizer, urea, DAP, MAP, um, and then of course your traditional grains. My name is Tim Baumgart. I'm with Consolidated Grain and Barge. I'm the commercial manager here at Jeffersonville, Indiana. The crop conditions within our own region, uh, we just had our last USDA report and, and showed some record type yields, I think 181 on corn and, and 53.3 on soybeans. And for the most part, our locations, again, are all seeing potential that would support that. We have, uh, last year, we had a very tough growing season in the eastern uh, corn belt. We had uh, a lot of preventive plant acres. We had a lot of acres that just sat fallow. This year we did get all, uh, all the acres planted uh, and we've had a tremendous growing season. Uh, August, we were just talking earlier that uh, August we've had more rain than, than I can remember in any August. So uh, our crop potential looks really good. Uh, I think our, our uh, yields in most of our areas would all support what the USDA numbers would come out and say. When I, when I think about the producer and, and talking about the producer marketing and their attitudes, 2020 has been a really tough season whether it be uh, the COVID-19, uh, uh, whether it be the, the, tr the, the trade agreements coming out of the trade agreements with China. And, and, and really, I go back to the COVID because you see a lot of uh, different things happening in the marketplace with, say, ethanol due to the COVID, uh, uh, the COVID pandemic. And so um, producer sentiment is, uh, somewhat negative on corn uh, from a price perspective and, and, and somewhat positive on beans as we see China coming in and starting to buy more soybeans. Uh, they are buying corn but with, with the uh, ethanol uh, downturn in ethanol uh, that still has them a little negative on corn. So what, what I'm seeing out of producers today is, is I'm seeing the interest and the ability and the willingness to sell soybeans uh, ahead, of, ahead of harvest. Uh, because most of them feel like they're not going to have enough crop storage this season uh, for the good crops. So they're much more willing, I find, to sell soybeans uh, over corn. So I think what we're going to see this year is, is, is the farmer sell uh, his, his, his cash needs in soybeans come fall, and he'll try to put away as much corn as he possibly can uh, because he feels like that market has been a little bit skewed because of the ethanol uh, downturn in demand. And so he's going to try to uh, hold that corn off the market as best he can uh, to try to hope for some better prices, maybe post-harvest or come next spring in 2021. When we saw the United States go into a lockdown type situation or a quarantine situation, we saw the demand for, for gasoline and fuel, fuel, fuel ethanol, if you will, uh, really take a nosedive. And so we've seen a number of plants uh, close their doors. We've seen a number of their plants cut their production. Um, I mean, I've heard numbers as much as 60%, 65% of capacity here this summer. Um, now we're slowly seeing with, as the economy reopens, we're starting to see uh, that fuel demand come back. Uh, certainly, I don't think ethanol margins are all that great, but we are starting to see some of that production come back as well. So. Um, it's been, a, it's been a tough year. I think we'll continue to see that grow as, as the ec economy continues to, to expand and grow. But that's been one of the single most uh, affected markets that we've had due to the, the pandemic. Um, the next in line would have to be the, uh, would be the meat industry. Uh, back in the, the height of the uh, meat industry, back or of the, the pandemic, uh, say in late March, early April, uh, man, we really saw um, the, the supply chain struggle because as all the restaurants shut down, now we've had this whole uh, redistribution of how people are eating. And, and first off, you, you take the restaurants out of the play and then you also put all the demand back into the grocery stores and we really had the distribution network really messed up. Um, and that's, that's pretty important because a lot of our production facilities, whether it be poultry or hogs, they all have a channel that they fit into and it's very hard for them, egg layers, uh, egg production, it's very hard for them to just change their packaging, change their processes to hit a whole new market segment. So 
Uh, we, we had uh, a lot of uh, animals that, uh, we had some animals that had to be euthanized, uh, and we had a lot of changing in production schedules, i.e. Uh, they were cracking eggs and, 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 and trying to cut back production uh, to, to slow the process down. All the while, that, that's going to limit feed demand. So those are the two areas that the pandemic really, uh, really, really uh, focused on and what hurt our business or hurt, hurt production agriculture. Chuck brought up uh, a, a picture, a, a map of all of our assets within CGB, and one of the areas I'd like to talk about is the Oklahoma area. This is a really unique area for CGB. Um, we we uh, expanded into that region in 2008 uh, because we saw a huge amount of opportunity in, that, in this area to pull grain out of Kansas and even Nebraska. Uh, I spent some time out there from 2009, I think, to 2012, and I, I'd say it's a really unique environment in, the, in this area. It is uh, the port of, uh, the, Tulsa is the uh, farthest northwestern point on river uh, in the U.S., navigable river, I guess I should say. And what's really unique in the fact that uh, we bring a lot of fertilizer comes out of the Gulf, comes up into to Tulsa, and then unloads. And then trucks from all over the, 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 the central plains there, Nebraska, even Colorado, Kansas, all come down to the port there to pick up fertilizer to take back. So what you have is you have a large backhaul program. A lot of times they'll bring hard red wheat out of Colorado, they'll bring soybeans out of Kansas, also hard red wheat out of Kansas. Uh, don't, don't see too, and most of it's hard red wheat out of Kansas as well, or out of Nebraska, excuse me. But all this is mo moving down to get the transportation to Oklahoma, to the port, to the fertilizer so that they can grab it and go back into the interior. I want to talk a little bit more about Jeffersonville, Indiana facility here. Um, again, this facility located just right here in southeastern Indiana. Uh, we have both uh, CSX, we also have barge transportation, uh, and also as, as well truck. Now, most of our product, probably 95% of our product goes out in a very sustainable way. Most of our products all go down the river system uh, by barge. Um, that is one, that's the one um, attribute of the, of the uh, North American uh, agriculture that, that uh, differentiates ourselves. We have a great uh, and sustainable uh, logistics system with, with the barge transportation. Uh, one barge can ship up to 65,000 bushels. That would be equivalent to 15, 16 rail cars, or that could be as many as 75 trucks, uh, and, do, and does it in a, in, a, in a safe, efficient, environmentally friendly way. On behalf of myself, Consolidated Grain and Barge, and Tim, we'd like to thank you for watching our video today. Hopefully you learned something about our company and our site here at Jeffersonville, and we hope to see you real soon. We thank you for your interest, and come back and see us real soon.